Good afternoon, Nikki from Gracie's house. Better late than ever. Not that I promise to come on every day, but I do enjoy our sessions. And um, this morning I have had every intention of getting the food shopping done, coming home, getting it all packed away, coming up to my workshop. No, 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 no. Husband had other ideas. <laughs> we had to get one more shot. So we had, he, he was in school watch, uh, filming Gracie again yesterday. Didn't need me. Um, hi Jennifer and Maria and Catherine. Didn't need me. And then I get a phone call on my way back from doing the food shopping to say he needed me to um, go in with him and microphone up. So I have not long been back in the door and I've packed up all my bits and bobs and I've come back down and I'm coming to chat to you. And we're gonna do some more work on this one. So I hope everyone's having a good day so far. Uh, if you are behind me in time, I hope you're having a good morning and it's gonna, this is gonna set you up for the rest of the day. So let's get cracking. All of the colours that I'm intending on you, Jeanette, you've been waiting for me. Oh, that's lovely. <laughs> hi Carol and hi Patricia. And you're catching me this time. I know, I think, I think we've mistimed a couple just lately, Patricia, and you've missed it and caught the end and had to go back and watch replay. Hi Rachel. So I've put all the colours that we may or may not use in the comments, most of them will be used. It's the two metallics at the end, not so sure about, but I've brought them down anyway. So in addition to what we were using yesterday, hi Erin, I've got Gold Digger and I've got Wedding Bell. Not used this one yet, brand new, brand, brand, brand new. But it's so, so the, that's the, the, um, the colors comparison side by side. I've got myself a new painty t-shirt. Can you read what it says? In my defence, I was left unsupervised. How cool is that? <laughs> I felt like I was looking back at all my lives because I upload them to YouTube and it looked like I literally had the same three things, in the, which is my workshop clothes, but admittedly, I was even I was bored. So I've got a couple of new tops and I'm liking this one. So we have got, just, just to recap what we've done here already. Hi Lorraine. Um, we've got Midnight Sky starting at the bottom. And then antebellum blue. <clears throat> and we have peacock. We have pure ocean. And we have the gulf, which is the lovely light colour at the top. And then for the little sort of crusty looking bits, the dribbly bits, sort of rusty, a little bit underwatery, we used terracotta and farmhouse green. So they're slightly sort of wild card colours, but actually they, they pop against... Um, the work that we've already done. So this was just the first, the first rough, rough blend coat to get some paint on. I've come in, I've come equipped with, hi Heather, <laughs> it's a cool t-shirt, I'm loving this t-shirt. I've come equipped with um, a lot of shop rag because there is going to be water involved today. Okay, so I've got all of my normal brushes, so the, the Dixie Bell ones, as you know, I've got my Dixie Bell Mini, and my oval medium. I've got a, a mini angle somewhere, but I think it's behind pieces of furniture with a load of other brushes, so I can't get to it right now. Um, I've also brought along some of my little artist brushes. Uh, I picked these up in a shop in the UK called, what's it called? Work, the Works. I was thinking workshop, workshop, The Works. And they come in a pack of like six, five or six or something. No, Rachel, I haven't done a second coat. So this is just what we did yesterday on the live. So it's still looking great, isn't it? it you know, it's, it's, there's a, there is a really decent level of colour on there. And then my, my cheap silver line brushes, um, which again, I think is pretty much like a UK brand. You may be able to find them on Amazon, but I know that it's, I'm pretty sure it's a UK kind of thing. So let's start. I'm actually going to go light down today. Just because what I don't want to do now is for anything, although I'm going to do some drippiness, I don't want any splatters to come down. Um, so someone yesterday on the live said, how do I, how do I work around the drawers not getting stuck? And I said, I just pulled them out. So that's all I did yesterday after I came off camera. I just pulled them out a little bit and it's dried really well. I did the top once I'd finished with you guys. Oh, Patricia, you did find some on Amazon. Have you, have you ordered them? Lorraine, which ones do you like? You like the artist brushes or the uh, the silver line? Anyway, they're all good. They're all good. So that's what I did. Still got a bit of paint on the floor from yesterday. Never mind. 
let's get going. <clears throat> so yeah, I'm, I, although I'm going for drippy bits, I don't want splatters as such. So I don't want particularly splatters of my golf splattering down onto peacock or antebellum blue, really. You got the silver line ones, and have you used them? Do you like them? How are you finding them? Because I just think they're, for, for the value, I think they're great little brushes. That's, I mean, I do love the Dixie Bell ones, but if you're caught in a pinch, and I just happened, before I, I came, came on board with Dixie Bell, I had quite a stash of these. Um, so that's what, they just get used. Okay, so let's crack on. So yesterday we talked about, I wasn't really going to do the farmhouse green and the terracotta, but I couldn't help myself. It was starting to look so cool. So I'm not too bothered if I cover a little bit up um, to get this, this second coat on. And I'm hoping that the second coat of the, the main blend, I won't have to do any more of that. It'll just be the texture pieces that I might work more on. You like them, they're good, they're handy, excellent. I'm so glad you, got, um, you like them. Okay, so we're putting some water on. It's not gonna stop. Um, just to make sure that the second coat doesn't need, you know, it's already such good coverage. It doesn't need to be. And you know what as well, my golf, I think at some point, maybe during the um, transportation over here, I think it's, it may have frozen. It's quite thick. It's still fine, there's no lumps or chunks, but it is quite thick. So at some point I probably will need to, to water it down a little bit. And that's the beauty of Dixie Bell. If you prefer a more fluid paint, you can you can water it down. Um, so we also talked yesterday about some gold leaf, which I'm still very much on board with doing. Um, and I'm thinking gold leaf. Once all of once I've finalised all the pieces here, I'm thinking the gold leaf will probably kind of sit and go on the edges and the corners of the drawers. Hi Mary. Um, so that's, but like I always say, the plan can always change and quite often does. And another reason for thinning down the paint a little bit is just to help with your brush strokes. This piece, not so much of an issue with because I'm going for texture, I'm gonna be going for drippy bits. But I'm, I'm just personally not a big brush strokes, you know, um, other paints, I'm not gonna name. People like that about them. It's just not for me. And that is literally just down to personal preference and taste. Okay. <clears throat> Let's just have a look at this one. Hi Sam, you're, you're managing to catch me actually live. <laughs> Yeah, I know, no, I, th I think I've got quite a few people that end up having to do catch up. Lovely chest. Thanks, Mary. <laughs> Cheeky. So where I did these terracotta bits of, and farmhouse bits, I'm not so bothered if it gets covered up. I'm going to be adding to it. One thing I think I've left down in my kitchen is my hairdryer. So I have got my heater on today. It was so cold in here yesterday. The paint was, it was staying so fluid. There was, it just wasn't drying. I've got a heater on today, hence I'm in t-shirt sleeves. Um, but so we'll just have to see how far along we get today. So the whole world is waiting on bated breath for the final count, aren't we in America, people? Um, who have we got there? Mary's got a festool. Have it, has it arrived or have you just ordered it? Honestly, the, I mean, actually, do you know what? Between, between my festool and my amazing knee pads, they're like my two best, best, best. Um, investments. Hi Helen, I've caught you as well, I think you've got the day off today. So I am going to cover those bits up but I'm not worrying if the coverage isn't, isn't completely going there on, the, on those bits because I'm going to be adding to those. It's just the main bit on the drawers I want to get cracking on. Put a bit more water across the drawers. Uh, 
And also, because I'm, I'm layering over it, I don't mind if a bit peeps through. If I end up sanding a little bit back, it's all about those layers. Mary, it's arrived and it's not stopped hugging it. I, I know that feeling. I do actually know that feeling. I couldn't stop looking at mine. And even my husband kept walking in and kind of touching it and going, oh, you can tell it's German. This is really good quality stuff. And I do think that um, once things quieten down, I think he'll very much get into the sanding and helping me. Okay. So I can see, you know, there's a little bit here that's peeping through of the terracotta. I don't care. I don't care. So um, the golf, pure ocean's the next one down. <clears throat> I'm a bit naughty. I don't. I don't put my. I don't put mine in another bowl or anything. Especially when I use these little ones, because you get through these much quicker. Um, I just. I just dip in. I know it's naughty. And you know what? I can see there already. I don't know if you can see this here. I haven't blended anything here, but just where the waters, it's got like a really subtle dribble, and it looks gorgeous. It's like a, oh, I like it. But I am going to add in, I've got, I've got to still, I have got to still crack on with some more paint. But the water effect is looking gorgeous already. So we will work on that and add more to it. <clears throat> the sound of the festal, Mary, is, it is very satisfying. Knowing that there's not going to be any dust with that noise is very satisfying indeed. I think Helen's going to be investing, I think we need to just give this a bit of a shake. I think it's gone a bit thin on the top. I think Helen's next investment is gonna be a festool also. <clears throat> and we were talking just now about whether you want to water down your paint. If you've been if it's been sat and it's gone a little bit too watery, just leave it with the lid off and it will thicken up because it'll start drying, but it won't dry as in it won't crack. So just leave it until it's a consistency that you like. Erin, another festival. <laughs> I know, I know. It must be very, very frustrating. I'm sorry, should we stop talking about festival? Hi, Laurie. Would it make you feel better? if we don't talk about it. <laughs> What's that one? You feel sad for your satin? Yeah, I mean, Mary, the mouse sander, well, it, you'll never get it out again. My other three sanders, I have three. I've not had them out since the festival. They have been gathering their own brand of dust in the corner. Just normal dust. Because there's no dust from the new sander. So it's just normal dust. A bit more water in there. So I I said to you yesterday, don't stop. Do a live video. Oh yeah, you do want me to do a live. It's just so it's it's really noisy for a live when you've got the extract well all of it is, but even more so with the extractor hooked up. Um and just going back to what I'm doing here. So this is the, uh, this is Pure Ocean. And I did say yesterday, I don't want this to be a particularly uh, pretty blend, let's say. I'm quite happy for it to be a bit of a messy one. Mary, sorry, I'll stop it. It took you four years to purchase it. Uh, yeah, it is a big purchase. They are, it's a big, it is a big investment. It is. Right, so I'm just I'm just blending those to it, and do you know what? Today, I'm not bothering with a second, but you know, with a blending brush, I'm just using all the brushes that I've got uh, to put the paint on, because it's not it's not going to be that really really clean clean blend. But you see how easy it becomes, and sometimes it's good if you've got drawers, you can use the drawers as your transition as well. It kind of hides, it hides little bits. 
if you're not 100% sort of satisfied with your blend, it's a way of hiding it a little bit. Loud is okay. But you do have volume buttons, that is true. So you need me to do a live to make your final decision. <laughs> Funny. And I think I've got a bit of fluff there. Yeah. And my next one, Peacock. Hi, Amy and Cindy. Thanks for joining. I keep forgetting to shape these before opening my lid up. <clears throat> okay, uh, what we got on here? So I'm just using one of my silver line brushes now. I've already I've, I've done the Dixie Bell ones. I must order some more Dixie Bell brushes. Oops. I still haven't decided what I'm going to do with my hardware 100%. I think I'm going to go along the kind of, seeing how the terracotta sits back here, I think I'm going to go with like a copper a copper side toned and I think if I do gold leaf if I do metal leafing should I say that I'm going to do like a copper toned gold leaf as well I think I've just seen a question Lorraine how much is the sander and the extractor yeah definitely sit down definitely so the, the, the kit I just got which is the um, the RTS 400 rec plus I think the plus only means it comes in its box which is really handy because it all stacks together. Otherwise you've got a sander that's loose. So you can buy the boxes separately. I just bought it because actually it worked out the better price. So with the sander and the extractor, and then I have two interface pads, which is like a little spongy um, pad that sits on between the sandpaper and then like the main machine. You don't have to use two at all times, but it means you can go around curves easier because it's, it's squidgy. And then, you. The kit comes with one sheet of sandpaper, that's it. So I bought two packs of 50 sheets of sandpaper, or should I say abrasives, um, and I bought 80 grit and 120 grit, because that's generally my most used. And it was about two pounds under 700, so yeah, around the 698 pounds. Ooh. And I was supposed to be waiting for Christmas. I was. But it got to sort of September, I think it was September I got it in the end, when Gracie went back to school. And I just thought, it's going to start getting really cold and I'm not going to be able to sand outdoors. So I just did it. And it just makes you so much more efficient. Because I don't have to worry about, the weather's the biggest one for me. The weather, not having to, not having to sand outdoors and... Um, and not having to clean up because I'm sanding indoors. 270 for just the sander in the box. That sounds about right, Mary, I think. Yeah, the, the extractor is more, more expensive. Um, and like I said, when you then layer on the abrasives and things on top. But, this, but the sandpaper lasts quite a long time as well. So, this this is blended quite nicely through here. I'm quite pleased with that. I'm just going to run that one back over again. And it's gone quite smooth as well. It's looking quite nice and smooth. Quite pleased with it. It's not, it, I don't want it to be, you know, like a, I want it to be a bit more obvious than a really smooth graduated. Hi, Barbara. Oh, it's lovely for you to be able to catch me. And I can see some of the texture from the work I did yesterday where the, um, the terracotta and the farmhouse green is coming through. Like I said, it doesn't matter because I'm going to be overlapping that texture anyway. I was just having a bit of fun and really wanted to show you guys what those colours would look like together and show myself, to be fair. Lou 
Lorraine, you're outside with four layers on, Ugg boots and a woolly hat. Uh, Sandy, yeah. Yeah. I feel you. But it's, I mean, they're super efficient as well. They really are very, very efficient. You know, the bookcase that I did the other day, I was thinking, oh, you know, I've got a load of prep to do on that. I'm never going to get to do a live. And, you know, about 30 minutes later, I was done. Good question. Hi, Nikki. Do you always paint with the drawers in? And what do you do with the sides of the drawers afterwards? I literally take it on um, a piece by piece. Because I'm doing a blend and I, and I don't want to have to match these blends afterwards, I do the drawers in. If I'm doing a one colour piece, absolutely drawers out, everything's taped up, I do a tight, tidy edge. I haven't 100% decided what I'm going to do on the sides of these drawers. It might just be a hemp oil or a Big Mama's Butter finish. Um, sometimes I add transfers, stencils. Uh, it, who You know, I've done spots um, using the stick and style stencils and uh, yeah, gilding wax, the eternal decor wax. So it's literally i i kind of sometimes i know what i'm going to do immediately this one is going to this one is a little bit more of an um an evolving project i'm going to kind of make i feel like i want to do something on the draw sides it's so old they're not particularly pretty i might make them pretty i just i'm not sure and i'm just i'm just going to scroll back up because i think i saw another comment come in that i want to Patricia, so you won't be sanding back to expose the terracotta colour. I'm probably going to layer more on, um, Patricia. Um, so no, yesterday I just got excited and I want to get, I wanted to get the colours on and see what they look like. In all honesty, um, but it doesn't matter because I'm going to be layering on, and I can still see, I can still see the shadow of them. But no, I'm probably not going to sand back. Um, and then there was something else there as well, Barb watching you blend my favourite colours with your coffee. Lovely. These colours look fantastic. I do think, I don't know how it's looking on your screens, everybody, but I think it's coming up more bluish than it is here. So this peacock here, when I look at it in real life, it's true to peacock, of course. On my camera, it's looking a little bit more blue. Um, but still, it looks great either way. <laughs> I'm still pleased. So that's Peacock that's just gone on. And then we have Antebellum Blue, which is one of my favourites. So if, you, if your lids get stuck on, a little tap like that on the floor works a treat. Patricia, Fabulinius. It is Fabulinius. And I had toyed with Stormy Seas as well, but I just wanted it to be a bit more punchy, because I do like them. I'm just gonna, there we go. This drawer's got a big chunk taken out of the top and I always intended on fixing it. Completely forgot. So because it's just a real grungy sort of piece, I'm just, I'm just gonna ignore it <laughs> and paint over it. Just do a little blendy blend over there. Oh no, I shouldn't say that, should I? Mine is blon Blanco's blendability. Let's get a bit more water. <coughs> I'm hoping my head's not in the way when I'm doing what I'm doing. Sorry if it is. I don't want all the paint to drip out where I've put too much in. It's gone in there. There we go. So, looking good. I'm pleased with it. I 
can't see that this is going to need. I think, I think with just these two coats, this is this all, this is done. The the blending part, the main sort of colours on. Just keep the water coming to, to just make the, the paint will flow easier for you on your piece. I personally am not one for, I don't tend to mist my brush so much. Again, it's all down to personal preference. You should try all the different ways and see what works best for you. We were talking about it yesterday. I like to do a rough blend on my first coat so that I don't have any harsh lines to try and deal with on my subsequent coats. However, there's a lot out there that do those so solid lines. I think it, it, for me, it gives me two benefits. It gives me, it's another way to practice blending. Even if it's just a rough blend, it gives you a practice. You start working, you start understanding what works for you, what colours will work for you, and what colours will work blended. Um, and for me, the second coat is then easier to blend because I haven't had a harsh line to deal with here. And you see, it just makes it a lot more easy. Mary, customer linking up. Okay. <laughs> Picking up commission. Oh, okay, sorry, I'm with you. Right, and then I'm gonna go um, ba -ba -bum, Midnight Sky. So that's the last colour on the bottom. And then it is, it's drying better. My heater's still on. Yeah, my heater's still on. And I've got a little brush for this midnight sky. So this is another favourite. Erin, <laughs> you can't stop staring at the colours. They do look really cute. I agree. And I did have some little little spots that have dropped down, which I can now cover up. So I had did I did do some a little drop of peacock had gone on there, which is what I didn't want to happen if I'd already done my blending. Um, which is why I started from the top down today. go in with a head torch and go underneath and make sure I've got all the bits later. So I'm just going to go back in with my antebellum blue brush and just blend the midnight sky into the antebellum blue. And you just keep working at it. Um, because I've let that first coat, the other thing that I find, leave your first coat overnight. For me, again, this helps hugely for your follow-up blending coat, that it's dried really nicely overnight. And it allows you to work hard, not harder, but you can work the paint more on your follow-up coat, I think. So I know a lot of a lot of us use like hair dryers on on you know for doing lives and stuff, but I still think if you if you've got the time to leave it overnight, I think it will make your job much easier on the second coat. I think. Okay, so I'm quite I'm quite happy here. I'm just gonna do that there as well. Just peacock one. So, we're there with this bit. Jackie, hello, how the devil are you? Joan, it has got a coastal feel. It has. And I kind of think that's evolved as well. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be adding some layers of grunge to just 
to just bring it down to maybe not quite so beachy vibe and a little bit more grungy. Um, so I'm going to go back in. I'm just going to move some of my paint pots around. I'm going to keep them open in case I need to fiddle. But I'm going to move them out of the way so that I can get some other colours on the go. Um, and I might, I just want to do some, some drippy bits actually. So I'm going to change a plan. I'm going to get a load of water on the top. So I'm going in over the, the, the gulf. Plenty of water. Plenty, plenty. And I'm going to just go in with a bit and then just see if it will, will dribble down a little bit. So this is, this is kind of, this is a bit more um, high Nicoletta, a bit more experimental really. So it's already much more fluid because of the amount of water that I've put on. I'm just going to get rid of those dribbles in there. And I'm going to go in with more water just so I can get some subtle dribbles from that lighter colour down to the next layer. And also, this will, if you're struggling to get a really smooth blending line, this is another way to sort of achieve it. This looks messy, I get granted. <laughs> you can tidy up these dribbles, but it will give you, if you keep going down with it, it gives you a subtle, um, you see here, you've just got a little bit of separation. This is just my water bottle. You can use a 50-50 water vinegar mix as well, and it works quite well. But I find water is, is perfectly adequate. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get some kitchen roll and just tidy those drips up, just a little, actually no I'm not, I'm going to go in with my brush, just to get rid of those. And you see because this is an old piece, some of the drawers are sticking out so it's missing bits and dripping down, but I actually quite like it, I don't know how you're feeling. And can you see, I don't know if you can see over here, where I've sprayed the water, the terracotta started to reveal from underneath. And I really like that as well, really liking that. So I'm just gonna sort of carry on in the way that I'm, I'm going, a little bit experimental. And if I don't like it at the end of it, I will just paint it over again. And that is the beauty. Yeah, so I'm loving how this is sort of revealed some up here, which makes me want to do a bit here, but I don't know. Yeah. There you go, you see? Can you see the terracotta popping through? Just a little bit. I don't know if there's enough on that corner. I'm not sure. I don't think it, it doesn't want to come through on that corner. But it's doing, and it makes, it's making it look like an old crusty patina. Uh, it really looks like it's copper underneath using that terracotta. So this is cool. This is lovely. I'm just gonna, this is why I bought some shop rag over with me, knowing that this was gonna be a wet and, and mucky one. So much yesterday for Hakey saying, um, I'm clean and tidy. Jackie, are you liking this? Okay. <clears throat> but I have got some biggish drips because I'm using a lot of water. Let's just clean up down there. Okay. So I'm gonna go in and do the same here, I think. I might just use the water and see, from what I've already done, whether we make too much of a mess of it. Ah, why not? thinking too much drips <laughs> yeah I've, I've done Erin I've done the 50 50 vinegar water I don't notice a massive difference I think you can get if you've got enough paint going on I think you can get enough de um, 